there is evidence of mathematical thought dating all the way back to 18,000 BC, and through discoveries and expansions, it has become the complex yet simply elegant subject that it is today. Throughout the study of mathematics, there have been significant contributions to the field by some familiar names, such as Isaac Newton, Gottfried Leibniz, René Descartes, and so on. Mostly the male contributors are noted, but there have also been many intelligent and influential women involved in the subject. Women interested in mathematics encountered several limitations due to their gender, but some were able to overcome these obstacles to build a career in the subject that they loved. Some of these notary women include Hypatia, Sophie Germain, Ada Lovelace, Sofia Kovalevskaya, and Emmy Noether. Each of these women have made important contributions to the field of mathematics. Hypatia, daughter of Theon, was born sometime between 355 and 370 AD in Alexandria, Egypt. Theon, who was one of the most successful academics at the time, and one of the last members of the library at Alexandria, raised his daughter to appreciate thought and education by sharing his own knowledge and philosophy with her. Inspired by her father, Hypatia became very fond of the study of mathematics and several sciences, including astronomy and astrology, and continued her education by teaching others about devices used in these subjects, such as the astrolabe. Within the field of mathematics, she made several advancements with her work on conic sections by editing On the Conics of Apollonius, which dealt with hyperbolas, parabolas, and ellipses. These ideas were established by dividing a cone with planes in different ways, a very popular idea throughout all of history of mathematics. During her time in Egypt, Christianity became the popular religion. Rumors had been spread that Hypatia was against the religion because of her public philosophical lectures that were considered non-Christian. Unfortunately, the Christian zealots took to these rumors very seriously and brought Hypatia to her very tragic death in the year 415. She was dragged from her carriage, stripped and beaten to death, and burned. Although her life was brought to a traumatic and unnecessary end, it was an inspiring one filled with great achievement and advancement in the mathematics and the sciences. Another great female mathematician to discuss was Sophie Germain. Sophie, born in the year 1776 in Paris to a wealthy family, had access to many educational resources in her father's library. During the French Revolution, she was forced to stay indoors for her own safety, time spent reading and teaching herself mathematics, including differential calculus. Around the time that Sophie was 18 years old, a new school called the École Polytechnique was established in Paris. This school was intended to train mathematicians and scientists. However, women were not permitted to attend. Regardless, Sophie was still able to obtain and study the lecture notes from some of the courses. Using the pseudonym M. LeBlanc, Sophie authored and submitted an analytical paper to J. L. Lagrange. Impressed by the paper and the fact that the student was a woman, Lagrange mentored Sophie and introduced her into the mathematical society. Using her same pseudonym, Sophie Sophie also sent some of her work in number theory to Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was equally as excited and impressed. Sophie also became extremely interested in the physical sciences, and in the year 1816, Sophie entered a paper title, titled Memoir on the Vibrations of Elastic Plates into a contest at the French Academy of Sciences and won. Her work in elasticity and number theory have proven to be very important to their respective fields. For her contributions to math and science, the University of Göttingen awarded Sophie an honorary degree. 
However, she died in 1831 from a battle with breast cancer before she could receive the award. Augusta Ada Byron, otherwise known as Ada Lovelace, was another famous mathematician in history. Ada was born in 1815 and was raised as a mathematician and scientist by her single mother since she was five weeks old. In the year 1834, Ada attended a dinner party where she was amongst other mathematicians and scientists. One of the items for discussion was an idea for a calculating machine with analyzing capabilities, an analytical engine. One day, Ada was appointed the task of translating an article about such a device by an Italian mathematician, Manabre, and produced a work thrice the length with the addition of her own notes. Her contributions to his article included ideas to use the device to compose music, create graphs, and for other scientific uses. She was also the mastermind behind a plan to use the machine to calculate Bernoulli numbers which is considered the first computer program. In fact, there is a software language that was named in her honor in 1979. Unfortunately, due to an illness, Ada died in 1852. Despite her short life, she made significant contributions to our modern day computer language and is an inspirational academic and role model. Another inspirational and aspiring mathematical woman from history was Sofia Kovalevskaya, who was born in 1850 in Moscow. Against her father's wishes, she studied mathematics with the aid of her uncle. Once her father had realized that Sofia was very talented in the subject, he allowed for her to have private lessons. Later, after attending lectures in Heidelberg, with special permission because of her gender, she relocated to Berlin to meet and work with Weierstrass. Here, she encountered even more limitations because of her gender and studied privately under Weierstrass. While studying with him, she completed three mathematical papers on abelian integrals, which had awarded her a doctorate degree, summa cum laude, from the University of Göttingen similar to Sophie Germain. In the year 1880, after taking a break to be with her family, Sophia was invited to give a lecture at an international congress in St. Petersburg by Shebyshev and Middig Leffler. In fact, Middig Leffler was able to help Sophia to become a professor at the University of Stockholm, despite the fact that she was a woman a limitation that had prevented her from teaching earlier in her life. She became very interested in partial differential equations and integrals, topics that were reflected in her work and her teaching. Once the university had realized what an asset she was to their academic program, she was offered tenure as a professor. Following this great achievement, especially for a woman, she then became an editor of a mathematic journal and became the chair of mechanics. One of her greatest accomplishments was when she entered her paper on the rotation of a solid body around a fixed point into a competition by the French Academy of Science and won. Her work in this publication was very highly regarded. Sophia struggled for most of her lifetime to have the same academic privileges as a man but with her persistent interest and hard work, she was able to take a huge step as a female educator in mathematics. The one discussed here is Emmy Noether. Emmy was born in Erlangen, Germany in the year 1882 and was not immediately interested in mathematics as some of these other noteworthy women. Instead, she was interested in studying and teaching languages such as French and English. She also learned traditional housewife chores, such as cooking, cleaning, etc. Since her brother and father were both mathematicians at the University of Erlangen, she had decided to take a mathematics class there when she turned 18. She was denied enrollment and was only allowed to audit because she was a woman. After a couple years of study, 
Emmy took an examination that permitted her into the doctoral program in mathematics at the university, where she then became the second woman to earn a degree in mathematics. With a desire to teach, she still continued to run into limitations because of the fact that she was a woman. She found work working with her father for 10 years, including the years that Germany was involved in World War I. Later, after the end of the war in 1918, she was invited to join Felix Klein and David Hilbert on their research and work defining one of Einstein's theories at the University of Göttingen. She agreed to work with the gentleman and proved herself worthy of a teaching position with compensation. <clears throat> Emmy Noether's teaching style really set her apart but ahead of other educators. She challenged her students to develop ideas on their own, essentially teaching them to teach themselves. Upon her death in the year 1935 due to illness, Albert Einstein wrote an extremely appreciable note to the editor of the New York Times in her honor. Within the past few days, a distinguished mathematician, Professor Emmy Noether, formally connected with the University of Göttingen, and for the past two years at Brown Mawr College, died in her 53rd year. In the judgment of the most competent living mathematicians, Fraulein Noether was the most significant creative mathematical genius thus far produced since higher education of women began. In the realm of algebra, in which the most gifted mathematicians have been busy for centuries, she discovered methods which have proved of enormous importance in the development of the present-day younger generation of mathematics. Pure mathematics is, in its way, the poetry of logical ideas. One seeks the most general ideas of operation, which will bring together in simple, logical, and unified form the largest possible circle of formal relationships. In this effort towards logical beauty, spiritual formulae are discovered necessary for the deeper penetration into the laws of nature. By exhibiting these characteristics in her person and in her teaching, she became a beloved teacher to many throughout her entire career. She encouraged and inspired so many to learn and discover, and because of her, many of her students became These five mathematicians are only a small representation of all the advanced and important female contributors to mathematics in all of history. Because of being a woman, Many of these academic leaders were limited in how they could use their intelligence and talents. Many had desire to teach, but were denied such opportunities because of their gender. Through these different conditions and time periods, more opportunities appeared for these women up to today. Through their work in mathematics and the sciences, society became more accepting of these roles being fulfilled by women and has since paved the way for women's rights in education. <laughs>